This is the grade eight math practice test for TN ready. Question number seven on this version of the test. Toby has created a map of his neighborhood. When he drew the map, he noticed his house, his friend's house, and the playground formed a right triangle because that's what you do in your free time. You go to your room, draw maps of your neighborhood, and then look for representative shapes. Everybody does it. We all know it. So Toby's being awesome here. Which expression represents the distance in inches between Toby's friend's house and the playground? So generally speaking, when I'm working with the right triangle, I'm going to be thinking about whether I want to know something about the angles or something about the sides. Well, this is a distance question, so it's something about the sides. In my head, that always makes me think of, okay, so it's essentially the Pythagorean theorem, right? So anytime you have a right triangle... And it's something to do with the sides and not the angles per se, other than the right angle. Um, you're probably going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Good old Pythagoras and his band of merry men and women. So the reality here is I'm going to write down the a squared plus b squared equals c squared thing and get a feel for it. What I'm looking for is his friend's house in the playground. So playground and friend's house. Now, how do you know where to put a, b, and c? Like what goes where? Well, I always had in my head would think like, okay, well, the right angle makes up a and b. So here's the right angle. The two sides that make that up are here and here. So 1 of A or B is 1.2. I'm just going to put it in the back just because I can do that like this. And then for B squared, because um, we don't know what it is, so we can now we can name this A if we want, 1.2 squared equals the hypotenuse, which is the long side. So you may just think C is that and then move on. But to me, I like to develop it off the right angle just because that's what I like to do. Don't judge me. So I end up with this. Now, I'm solving for A. That's the distance. I just need to get A by itself. A squared is here. I need to eliminate this plus 1.2 squared term. So I'm going to subtract it here. So I end up with nothing. But if I do something to one side of an equation, it is required of me to do it to the other side. So then I end up with a squared is equal to 2.5 squared minus 1.2 squared. The last step here is to say, okay, so I have a squared, but I'm looking for a. What's the opposite of squaring something? Square root. So I need to take the square root of both sides. So I end up with a is equal to, because this square root and the square will cancel out. That's what a squared looks like, and the square root is actually the fraction with the 2 on the bottom, so these cancel out because you get 2 over 2, which is just 1, so you didn't put the A to the first. Um, that's f future stuff probably, but it's in, you, know, you can still look at it anyway. And then you're just left with bringing this down, not like telling it something mean, but just rewriting it on the next line. There it is. So the answer to this one is P, 7P, um, since like an apartment number. The thing about this question is it's really easy to get overwhelmed just looking at it. Uh, sometimes you get these kind of answers and you're just like, well, I know it's plus, so I'm just going to pick one of these. And I know I probably need to square it. Okay, so S is probably the most likely missed answer would be my guess, because if you can't remember... Um, if you remember that you have to square them in the first place, you'll probably think that you just leave them like that. Write the formula and then work it down a little bit. And it's easy to see that A and, and then if you know A, what A, what makes A and what makes B, and the order doesn't actually matter. Um, it makes everything move a lot more smoothly. But writing this statement down in the beginning is a big deal just because it gives you some reference point and then writing down this Everything else, I think you could just do it without having to write it all down. But if you write all the steps down, it makes sure that you get everything right because you've addressed everything. 
Again, this is one of those questions where if you could just get started and then once you get started, work your way through, it's not that big of a deal. But if you don't get started, it's a big deal. And the other side of that is if you get started and it's sloppy for no real reason, you'll miss it as well. Don't let those people take your scores away. Write it all down. Takes This whole thing took four minutes and I'm explaining it. Imagine doing it in your head. It'd take less than a minute to write all of it down and get to the end point that you'd want to get to. So take the time.